Hey guys, welcome to step one of next. My name is Michael Scobie and I'm the lead pastor here at Vibrant. My wife Carmen and I had the tremendous honor of serving this church as lead pastors. We're so proud of you, first of all, for taking your first step, uh, for really jumping on board and starting this on-ramp process of being a part of Vibrant and a part of the Vibrant family. We, it's our, really our vision for you to live vibrant life in Jesus, and this is a huge, huge part of it. Now, um, our prayer for you, the entire vision that we have of this church is a prayer that, that Paul actually writes in uh, in, in Ephesians, and, and we find that in Ephesians chapter 1, and, and here's the deal is that in the Bible it talks a lot about prayer, but there's not a lot of prayers actually in the Bible, and so when there is one, you've got to really kind of pay attention to it and lock in, but we break down this prayer into four segments or four different vision steps that we have for you and your family and your children, and the first one is to know God. That's your first blank, and we find that in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. It says, I pray that you may know him better. Better. Now, this is not a mental no, but this is an int like knowing him intimately and passionately and relationally. That's what this is. It's knowing God. We want to help you go on a journey to know God, to know him. And then, so this, your second step is to find freedom. Find freedom. We find in that scripture, again, it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you'd be focused and clear. The truth is that all of us have a past and all of us need freedom from that. So we want to help you find freedom from that. Number three is to discover your purpose. You know, Vibrant Church is really all about helping people find their purpose in this season of their lives. We find that in Ephesians 1. Again, it says, I pray that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I think the difficulty a lot of times is understanding that he has called you to a hope. And then finally, the final step is that and we want to help you make a difference. Uh, Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, it says, I pray that you may grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers and his holy people. Now, I'm going to go back through this vision again. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. But I'm not going to tell you uh, what it is, but I'm going to tell you how we do that. Because that's really where we, uh, where we stand apart and how we make a difference. is that it, It's how we do that. So, number one, to know God. How we help you know God is through our Sunday services. We really consider reaching people who do not know God personally to be one of our greatest responsibilities. And in fact, our Sunday services are designed for people at all stages on their spiritual journey, but we're really, everything is completely geared towards reaching the person that is far from God and who doesn't know God. And, and the way I like to say it is that we exist for the people that are not here yet. In fact, the moment that we start to exist for the people that are here, we stop becoming a church because the church is supposed to be a hospital. And at that point, we become a country club, and we just don't want to be that. We exist for people who are not here yet, for who, who are far from God. And I really believe that God's heart breaks for lost people. In fact, uh, the way I like to explain it is this particular story. My wife and I, we had just moved uh, to the Woodlands area. My wife uh, had just had our second child, and so he was one month old, and we were on a family date night, which of course for us, that means we're always at Target. And so I don't know if it's like that for you, but uh, we were at family date night, and my wife was actually returning something, and she was holding our, our one month old, and I had our four month old, or her four year old son, Ethan, with me buying something at Target. And so uh, we had kind of, you know, divided and conquer a little bit and Ethan is standing there and, and he says hey I want to go stand by mom and well she was about 20 feet away from me and so I thought yeah that's no big deal go stand by her so I said okay go and I didn't think anything about it well I finished checking out I grabbed my receipt and I grabbed the things that I was supposed to have and I turned around and and uh, all of a sudden Ethan was not there by mom and I walked up to Carmen. I said, well, where is Ethan? She said, well, he was with you. I said, well, he was supposed to be with you. And instantly, you can imagine, it was the ultimate freak out from a, a parent's perspective. We could not find our son, our oldest son, and, and we could not find him anywhere. We started going around the store, Ethan, Ethan, where, where are you? We can't find you. And we ended up finding him in the cosmetics section because he was sitting right in the middle of the aisle. And uh, the reason he went back there was, was because that was where he saw his mom last. Last. That's where she was last, and he was sitting right in the middle of the aisle playing with a Hot Wheel car that we had just bought him. You know, the, the thing there is that I didn't love my second son, Miles, any less, my youngest son. I didn't love him any less, but in the moment, my concern was the son that I had lost. 
My heart was breaking for the son that I had lost. I didn't know where he could have been. Somebody could have snatched him. He could have been anywhere, but my heart was breaking for the son that I had lost. You know, I really believe that that's the way God looks at the church, is that really, it's not that he loves the saved folk or the church folk any less. I think he loves us and gives us the same grace and mercy as anybody else, but I believe that his heart breaks for lost people. And so that's what we design everything, our Sunday services from our worship to our preaching to our videos to our lighting, everything is designed for the lost person to come in and feel connected and have the easiest on-ramp to have the opportunity to know God. That's the heart of the Father and the lost sheep. So our Sunday services focus on four values. Number one, celebration. Celebration. We believe church should be enjoyable. It should be enjoyable. Church has got to be fun. It's got to be enjoyed and not endured. Church should be the highlight of the week. In fact, our dream team gathers before they serve every Sunday morning and they talk about things that they enjoyed through their, throughout their week, their favorite moment of their week. And my, one of my favorite parts of the week is that I get to hear a lot of our team, many of them show up on Sunday morning and they say, my favorite part of the week was coming here and serving. That makes my day. Church should be the highlight of your week and I love that. Number two, inspiration. We believe church should be a place where people experience God's presence. You want to go to a church where you know God is in it. You know God is here and you pray and you ask God to move. Number three is preparation. We believe church should be a place where people learn how the Bible applies to your lives. You're going to notice in my preaching that I try to preach very applicable messages that will help you outside of the church house. And so really what my goal is, is my goal is for you to remember my messages on, on Thursdays and Fridays and, and when you're at, the, at your worst and when you're at your best, on the top of the mountain and the bottom of the valley, and ver make it very applicable where you're going through something and you remember, oh, I remember we talked about that at church. I think that's the purpose of what we should do on Sunday mornings is we gather to prepare to make sure that we're living the life out, this vibrant life that God has called us to. And then finally, number four, which is actually should be number one, is, is salvation. We believe church should be a place where people make their next step or their first step towards a healthy relationship with Jesus. Our church services are designed for people to know God. And that's why every Sunday, regardless of what we preach about, I'm going to give somebody the opportunity to make their first step in a relationship with Jesus, which is simply surrendering your heart and your life over to him, acknowledging that he died for our sin and rose three days later so we could have grace and mercy and salvation and fulfillment in this life. So the challenge is, is what does this have to do with you? I, you know, for you, I want to see you sharing what God is doing in your life, in your life. If Vibrant becomes your church, if this is going to be your home church, I want you to join me. I want you to join in with me and partner with me. Several Sundays of the year, I expect for you to have somebody that's unchurched with you in these seats. Here's the deal. If you do what I can't do, I'll do what you don't want to do. Most of you don't want to take a microphone and preach a 35-minute message, and I totally understand that. But you have an influence base that I can't touch, that I can't speak to. You're going to be able to connect with people that I can't. If you do what I can't do, I'll do what you don't want to do. In fact, there are four things and four ways that you can help us share what God has done in your life and how you can share the message of Vibrant Church in your influence base and in your community. Number one, accept the personal responsibility. The way I like to explain it is, is that every person has been given a measure of influence. And the way I look at it is, you know, my influence in this city is about like this table. It's a certain amount of people in this city that I have influence over, whether it's, uh, you know, the, I'm their pastor or they know I'm a pastor or so social media or whatever that might be. But if this church is going to grow only by my sphere of influence, it can only grow at this level. But if somebody else, you have a certain measure of influence and then your neighbor has a certain measure of influence, you accept that personal responsibility of your influence, the people that are connected to you, we can grow much quicker and we can share what God is doing in our city much, much quicker. The second thing is to build a personal relationship. You know, people just want to know that you care. People want to know that you care and you love them and you, like honestly, they want to know that you care about what goes on in their life. Build that relationship and, and let them know that you care about them so that you can, number three, share your personal story. Believe it or not, evangelism is not telling people what's wrong with them, right? In fact, if evangelism is not even telling people, hey, 
Jesus died for your sin and rose three days later so you could live in victory. Especially in the Bible Belt, many people will say, well, yeah, I get it. Okay, I understand that. But if you tell them, you say, hey, when I was 11 year old, years old, my mother was standing over me three feet away from me with a knife in a drunken rage. And had I not been woken up by the grace of God, I would not be alive today. And I believe when I was 17 years old, God spoke to me and he told me to give up a full ride scholarship to LSU for music. And he called me into ministry and he said, Michael, I'm going to change thousands of people's salvation and future through you. You know, at that point, when I told you that, you're a little bit more gripped in the story. Why? Because that's my personal story. You have the opportunity after you build a relationship with them, not only to tell them about what Jesus did for them, but tell them through the lens of what Jesus did for you. And why do you do all this? Number four, so you can give a personal information, uh, invitation, invitation. If you know how to lead them to Christ, do it right there. If you know how to do it, do it. If you don't, bring them to church and let us help you. You know, uh, I've grown up in church uh, pretty much all my life. And, and so I know what it is to bring people to church and even bring people to church, uh, you know, to invite them and maybe even feel a little embarrassed about what might happen. We're, we're pretty unashamedly a, a, a spirit-filled church and a spirit-led church, but I've said it from the beginning. We're a spirit-filled church, but not a, a weird church. So I promise you, when you invite your friends and family, that we will never embarrass you on a Sunday morning. We will never embarrass you when you bring your friends to a worship in environment. And uh, we promise you that we will lead them to Christ and with a manner of respect and humility and honor them. See, if you look at your notes, Sundays are not the only time that we reach lost people. We do it through our missions. In fact, we do it through uh, three different ways, and we find that in Acts 1 and 8. God calls us to our city, our nation, and our world. We find that here in Acts 1 and 8. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. In addition to our efforts on Sunday mornings, we're focused to reaching people in three key areas designated by Jesus. In Jerusalem, our cities, uh, James 1 and 17 says, Real religion, the kind that passes muster before God the Father, is this. Reach out to the homeless and the loveless in their plight. The primary way that we reach our city is through our, our Sunday services, our community outreach, our life groups, and personal evangelism, and serve day. One thing that you'll notice is we have many serve events throughout the months and throughout the year that you have the opportunity to get involved in. It might just be handing out water to people that need it, but it might also be serving breakfast to a teacher who needs encouragement. So you have those opportunities to reach our city together. Number two, in Judea and Samaria, our nation. The primary way that we do that is through, we partner with an organization called the Association of Related Churches out of Birmingham, Alabama. This organization is not a denomination, but they are just an organization that launches life-giving churches all over the world. In fact, we just celebrated over 900 life-giving churches being launched, and we launched with that organization. And what happens is they get together and they help train church planters that have burden for a city. And they come in and they train you and they coach you and then they resource you. In fact, with this church, they resourced this church when we, when we launched. We raised, uh, for every dollar that we raised, they matched our, our fundraising dollars up to $50,000. So this church was a recipient of $50,000 from the Association of Related Churches. And they helped us to launch this church. So what we do is we reinvest back into that. We have the tremendous opportunity to impact church planners that are impacting the world. The Association of Related Churches has a 93% success rate in church plant launches beyond five years. It's a tremendous, the, the eternal return on investment is incredible there. Now, to the ends of the earth, our world. Every time that you give, I want you to know that at least 10% of everything that you give into this house actually doesn't stay here. It goes out of this house to reach people, whether it's locally or nationally or beyond that in foreign missions. And there are different ways to look at foreign missions. In my church growing up, we had uh, we supported you know 30 uh, foreign missionaries, and you would see pictures of them on the wall, and, and we'd support them just a little bit each month. And I remember as a kid looking at it and say, well, hey, this guy looks cool. Hey, that guy looks kind of weird. I don't know that I'm going to bring him to my house, right? Well, for me, I, 
I never knew these people. I never got to know these people ever. And so what we do is we choose a little bit different path in missions. We choose one family that we are going to impact the gospel with. And now we're going to share the, we're going to share our missions dollars with. And so what we've chosen is we've partnered with a family out of Lithuania. Uh, Tony and Shasta Miller moved there 19 years ago to launch a life-giving church. And they have knocked it out of the park. They are currently impacting thousands of people in the middle of a country where the average uh, median salary per month is $783 per month. So we have the opportunity to be able to make an impact on their uh, situation where really our church is able to almost make it where he can serve uh, full time and impact people with the gospel. Now, when they come back into the, into the States for deputation, what we plan to do is bring them into our family and we're going to love them and we're going to put them up at the Woodlands Resort and we're going to take care of them and refresh them. That's what I see as missionaries. When they walk away, they're able to go home encouraged. We resource them when they're away, but when they're home, we are the lifter of their arms. We encourage them and bring them back to it. Now, that is all under the purpose of no God, and, and the good thing is, is not all of them are this long. So uh, <laughs> we'll turn to number two, which is find freedom. We find freedom through our life groups. We really believe that life change happens in the context of relationships. And so life groups have one simple purpose, to bring people together to build your friendships and your faith. And so life groups provide three things for you and I. Number one, a place, a place to connect with others, to connect. Because a church will feel too big if you don't know anyone, especially even in an environment, you know, our worship center is not huge, but even in an environment just as ours, if you don't know anyone, our church will feel too big. And so we're not made to do life alone, so God created uh, us for community, and life groups provide a place for you to, to connect with others. Number two, a place to protect each other. We can come alongside each other. When I'm struggling, you can help me. And when you're struggling, I can help you. The perfect example I love to give is, is this. The associate pastor of this church, his name is Sean Cass. And uh, me and I, it, it, we've done ministry together for years. And, and so we've known each other for a very, very long time. And uh, we're to the point now in our friendship now that when we call each other and we talk very often, within five seconds of being on the phone, we can know when something is wrong. We can know, hey, Sean, what's going on? Hey, Michael, what, what's going on in your life? And so really life groups are, do that exact thing. When you go to, you join a life group, it's part of your family. You kind of go in and when something's going on in your life, the purpose of it is that you go and they put your, their arms around you and they, they hug you, they pray with you, they lift you up and they help you. A place to protect each other. That's what life groups do. And then finally, number three, a place to grow together. Proverbs 27 and 17. I love it when it says this, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We really believe that every person is created with this God-given potential to make a difference in the world. So we want to help you and encourage you and develop you to make that difference. So what is our model? What is our how? What is it? This is how we do that. Vibrant Church is a church of life groups, not a church with life groups. In fact, um, I, number one, our, our groups and our life groups are completely free market, okay? So what that means is we don't really care why you gather. We just care that you gather. We want you to be together and, and connect and protect and grow and build your friendships and build your faith. Whether you're playing volleyball or studying the book of Romans, it doesn't really matter to us. We want you to get together and our groups are there primarily to help you grow your, your friendships and your faith. The second thing that you need to know is that we do them in semesters, semesters that we stop and start three different times throughout the year. So January through May, there is a semester that life groups happen. And, and then at the end of May, we dismiss those life groups. We start up again in June and we do a short six-week summer semester for June and July. Then at that point, we, we dismiss those life groups. And then we go again from August until December. This gives us a few opportunities. Number one, it gives you the opportunity to experience different groups. If you're in a Financial Peace University life group from January until May, you may not want to do that in the summer. You might want to go do a basketball life group or a, a, a knitting life group. I don't know, whatever you want to do. And you might have, you want to have the opportunity to do a different group. It gives you the fresh start and the opportunity to always begin something different. Now, also, if you're a life group leader, if you're leading a group on the Book of Romans, you might want to lead a leadership group the next semester. And it gives you the opportunity to do that. 
So there's a few things, a few other things that you want to know about our groups. And number three is that everyone can join a group. In fact, it's our vision that we have more people in our life groups during the week than come here on Sunday. In fact, right now in our life group system, there are people that go to our life groups faithfully that go to other churches. And we are completely cool with that. In fact, we love that. If their home church is helping them know God and they just need help finding freedom from their yesterdays and we can help them, Praise God, that's, that's, that's the big C church mentality and that's what we're all about. Everyone can join a group. You don't have to be a member or an owner of Vibrant Church. You don't have to do that. And so, and then the, finally, the, the, the last thing about groups is that anyone can host a group. The only prerequisite we have to host a group at Vibrant Church is for you to go through next because we want you to know our vision and our values and be connected to our, our heartbeat. And so you can really be able to connect and reach, reach the people that are in your group and pastor the people that are in your, in your group. So our big vision is for you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. I'm showing you how to know God through our Sunday services and find freedom through joining a life group where you can connect, protect, and grow. And now I'm going to help you, uh, you find, you, you're able to discover your purpose right now in Next, which is, it, it's tremendous. Now I'm not going to spend too much time on this uh, because you're currently in it, but um, in Next, it has two steps. Today is your first step, which is become a member or an owner. We like the term owner over member because members have rights. Owners have responsibilities. When you decide that Vibrant Church is going to be your home, I want this to be your place. If this is your place, this is your home, you're an owner of it. When you see a piece of paper on the floor, I want you to care enough about it to pick a piece of paper up. This is our home. And then number two is discovering my design and joining a team. Our, our dream team coaches will be helping you next week to, and they'll be teaching you through labs and helping you discover your personality assessment and going through your spiritual gifts assessment and you'll have a, a ton of fun next week in that. So uh, number four is to make a difference and how we make a difference is through our dream team. It's through our dream team. All of us were created by God to make a difference in the world around us. In fact, we find that people that sleep the best at night are the ones that make the difference, make a difference during the day. And so we want to help you make a difference. In fact, we find in Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Here's the deal. We really, at Vibrant, we believe there's no disconnect. There's no separation between the ministers and the congregation. In fact, my job as a pastor is not to preach great sermons. It's not to build great programs. It's not to have the greatest kids ministry or, or have the greatest worship ministry or to do, you know, the greatest social media feed or, or, or of greatest quotes. It's not that. My goal as a pastor, according to Ephesians, is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. What does that mean? Is that God has prepared something already in your heart and he has put it in front of you. And it's my job to equip you for that so you can step into it. The way I love to say it like this is that God will never typically drop a full loaf of bread in front of us. What he does is he drops a little breadcrumb and then another breadcrumb and another breadcrumb. And eventually you put that together and you end up with an entire loaf, which is your purpose so you can make a difference. So you can start by joining, you can join the dream team next week at, uh, during next. And so it's a great opportunity for you. I want to talk about something that many churches won't talk about today. We're going to talk about church government. For some of you, you don't, you may not even care about this, but transparency is one of our greatest core values. So I want to talk to you about that. As you consider investing your heart, your time, your family, and your finances in the life of a church, it's important for you to feel confident in a church's leadership. And so our goal in sharing the details of our government is that you will understand that our church is structured to support the values of integrity, accountability, and spiritual authority. And so our church government is made up of three groups of elders. Number one, we are guided by pastors. And so um, my wife, Carmen, and I, we're the lead pastors of this church. We're the ultimate vision visionaries of this church and we our leadership structure is very much set up like a pyramid so Carmen and I lead all of the uh, the leadership structure and the vision of this church and so we have an executive team uh, which is Pastor Sean and Theresa they're our associate pastors and then Ryan and Crystal Craiglow our 
are they are our dream team coaches. They lead all of our, our all of our teams, and uh, Sean and Theresa lead all of our groups and our freedom groups. And so what happened is uh, they lead all of our downflow leaders, uh, but our executive team makes all of the visionary decisions for our church. And so whether it's a sermon series or you know whether to have an event or whether we're where we're going together as a church, they help me, and I love that I, that they are super involved with this process for me because they have uh, they're connected with the pulse of the church and they're able to communicate things to me that I may not even know. And so what uh, what happens is there's a downflow here where Ryan and Crystal will lead our team leaders and then our team leaders lead the teams and teams are naturally developing leaders and the same thing with our life groups and so everybody is constantly being developed so everybody is being led by somebody and everybody has a pastor and so um, now number two we are protected our church is protected by trustees our trustees are up to seven members of the congregation that will be appointed by during or after year two by the lead pastor to oversee the finances and direct the provision of the facilities needed by the church. Now, um, we are not quite to year two yet of our church launch. So what that means for us is that we've not elected trustees within our church. And so your question is, well, who are the trustees? Our trustees are actually, it leads us to number three. Currently, our trustees are, so we're strengthened by overseers. Our overseers serve as our trustees and overseers currently. Our overseers are three pastors of respected congregations and ministries who love Vibrant Church and are willing to provide spiritual protection for this church. These people are not inside of our church, but they're senior pastors of other churches who are our fathers or brothers as spiritually. And so let me introduce you to them. My pastor is Pastor Nathan Keating. He pastors uh, at Parkway Life Church in Lumberton, Texas, and uh, they are uh, they are our pastors, and they really they're our spiritual authority and our spiritual shepherd in life. We talk with them very often, and uh, they the, Pastor Nathan and Adina are very invested in this church. Not just they don't you know they don't have the opportunity to just kind of pull strings or whatever, but they're they're just bought into what happens here at Vibrant Church. In fact, when we were launching Parkway Life Church, the the church that they pastor invested $30,000 into the launch of this church with no strings attached. They didn't ask us to pay it back. They invested it into, the, into this church, allowing us to have everything that you see today when we launched. Now, Pastor Monte Young, he pastors NOLA Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. He launched through ARC, the same organization that we launched through, and uh, they've launched, they've built an incredible church. And in fact, uh, when we launched with ARC, uh, like I said earlier, they gave us $50,000 to launch the church. And they said the, uh, the only requirement with that is for us to reinvest $50,000 into another church planner. So essentially, it's a 0% interest loan that we would reinvest back into another church planner, which was a phenomenal deal. And we were about to start doing our reinvestment and uh, giving uh, over 10% of everything that came in directly to ARC and giving it to church planners. And Pastor Monty called and he said, hey, when are you starting? your reinvestment. I said, well, we're actually about to start this week. And he says, well, hey, I don't want you to do that. I want you to, I'm going to cover the entire thing for you. Our church is going to cover the entire $50,000 reinvestment for you. Well, I said, man, why, why would you do that? That's, in, that's incredible. He said, here's why. Number one, I want your church to be completely debt free. Number two, I want you to be able to diversify your missions money where you're able to focus on foreign missions and you're able to give some to ARC for national missions. But for us personally, what we've done is we've taken on the opportunity to impact every teacher on, in Conroe ISD. So that's our local missions effort. We take on every teacher and we're gonna honor them and we serve them breakfast and we show up and we're encouragers and we put our arm around them. And for us, the big vision is to make a difference, right? We wanna help people discover their purpose and make a difference. These teachers are helping kids discover their, di their purpose so they can make a difference. So it's our responsibility to go to them and be encouragers and be arm lifters of them. And so finally, Pastor uh, Chad Decody, who pastors Life Church in Houma, Louisiana, this church gave thousands of dollars, but also was the manpower in helping launch this church. They, they send uh, th their graphic designer, they subsidize all of the graphic design that happens at Vibrant Church, but also sent a team that was here at launch, and they were here to lift up our arms and love us and pray for us. So we are, uh, we're very blessed to have overseers that are bought into the process here at Vibrant, and they care about what happens at this church. Now, let's talk about church finances. We're going to be very transparent with you about where every dollar goes in this church. We believe 
fully in, uh, in tithing and giving 10% of our income back into the work of God. We believe it's biblical. We believe it's a biblical commandment for us. And we really believe that God will always do more with the 90% that we have left over than we try to expand and do with the 100%. And we don't understand how it works. We just know that it works. And so at Vibrant Church, we practice tithing for the support of Christ's body, the church as God commands. And so we recognize that giving 10% of our income is the biblical standard for giving, and that's the biblical standard. In fact, giving is one of the central themes in the Bible. Jesus talked more about that than heaven, hell, or prayer. And so that's a really big thing. And so there's a few things that I wanna let you know about our giving structure at Vibrant. Number one, I'll tell you what, where every dollar goes right now. We have a big pie, think of it like a pie chart. And these are legal percentages uh, that are in our bylaws and these cannot be changed and they, they can't be uh, gone over. Our overseers see uh, a financial report every month and they see where every dollar goes and it has to line up within our bylaws. So, and so everything is approved and, uh, and gone through with accountability. And so 35% of everything that comes in is allocated for buildings, for buildings and, uh, and management for buildings. 35% goes to ministry, and now ministry includes salaries for childcare, for any pastoral, but it also includes getting, uh, you know, gold goldfish for your children, okay? Uh, so everything that happens, it, it includes donuts and coffee on Sunday morning. 20% uh, of everything that comes in is operations, which is the light bill, and it's, you know, it, it's the plumbing, and it's the internet, and everything that happens operationally, you know, our subscriptions that we have with Planning Center and all the other things. And then finally, the 10% is, that's the only one that we can never do less than 10%. We, uh, many times, we go above and beyond 10% in giving to missions. Here's the deal, is that we expect for you, when you, you know, a vibrant church is going to be your home, we expect you to tithe. That's just part of, you know, it's not required, but we encourage you to do it because we, we really believe that your family is going to be blessed with it. But for our church to be blessed, our church must tithe. So our church tithes to missions and it continually, uh, continually happens. So we give at least 10% of everything that comes in, it goes out because we really believe for us, our church is not a reservoir. We're a river. We're a river, and that's the only way for new fresh water to come in is for the old water to go out. And that's the way we view finances. And now the great thing for you uh, to know about finances is that me as the pastor, I literally don't know what anybody gives in this church. You right here in this room could be the biggest giver and at Vibrant Church. You could walk up to me and shake my hand. You could be the biggest giver, and I literally wouldn't know it. Our, all of our finances are managed through a third-party company directly out of our church, and I receive a report that says how much was given so we can manage them correctly and properly. But I don't know who gives what in this church. It allows me to lead and serve and develop people. Just to be honest with you, I'm not a financial consultant, and I'm not an accountant. So I promise you, I'm not going to try to be one. I'm not going to operate outside of my gifts. I'm great with people. I'm great pastoring people and helping you discover your purpose and your call and helping you step into that. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So I want you to know that our church is always going to be very transparent when it comes to giving. And so there are three ways that you can give. Number one, through your tithe. 10% of everything that comes in. Uh, tithing is a huge, that, if you want to start somewhere, that's your starting point. If you can't do 10%, start at 5%, okay? Start at three, start at nine, start somewhere, Okay, start somewhere. Number two, an offering. An offering is something that you give above and beyond the tithe. The Bible says that by living generously, you're able to take hold of the life that is truly life. And then finally, the gift of giving. The gift of giving is a spiritual gift that God gives to some people, according to Romans 12 and 8. And I want to give you the real life example of a gift of giving. We were looking at being a portable church in a portable location in a school, actually right up the road from here. And there's a man that goes to this church that met with me in that time. And he said, hey, I, well, have you ever thought about being permanent from day one? And I said, well, yeah, I've thought about it, but it's just way out of our league. Uh, the Woodlands is the second most expensive real estate, commercial real estate, real estate market in the Houston area. So I thought there's no way for a brand new church plant to do that. He said, let me check on it. Well, long story short, the reason that we're in this building today, there was a build out that was over $200,000. And that build out was not paid for at all by, by Vibrant Church. By 
that didn't, we didn't pay for any of it. It was paid for by that individual that had the gift of giving. That person, you won't see them serving in kids' ministry. You may not see them on the stage. You're not going to see them with a microphone in the hand. But God has blessed them with their finances. And they've chosen to use that with material resources to be able to dump back into this church. And what has happened is what we've seen is when they invested in this church, God gave right back to them and opened up the windows of heaven and doubled what they gave. You can never outgive God, and we see that happen, whether it's your tithing, your offering, or if you feel like you're called into the gift of giving, step into that. So if you want to become an owner of Vibrant Church, if today you're ready to make it, this is, you're putting your stamp of approval on it. This is your home. This is going to be it. Let's go through the Vibrant Church membership covenant. Having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and being in agreement with the values and ideas presented in step one of next, I now feel led by the Holy Spirit to unite with the vibrant church family. In doing so, I make the following commitment to God and my fellow church members. Number one, I will protect the unity of my church by acting in love towards other members, refusing to gossip, gossip and following its leaders. Number two, I will share in the responsibility of my church by praying for its growth and health inviting the unchurched to attend, warmly welcoming those who visit. Number three, I, serve, I will serve the ministry of my church by discovering my gifts and talents, using my God-given gifts to make a difference in the lives of others, and developing a servant heart. And then number four, I will support the, the testimony of my church by attending church and small groups faithfully, living a godly life, and giving regularly. Today, I want to thank you so much for coming to Next. I'm going to turn it back over to our host, but if you're ready to make your next step and make Vibrant Church your home, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to vibranthtx.com slash next. And under there, you'll see step one. I just want you to fill out that ownership or membership card that is in there. And what's going to happen is you'll send that to our team and we'll get you assimilated into planning center and start the process of getting you connected to a team. Next week is going to be incredible for you. You're going to have the opportunity to learn more about yourself, do a little self-discovery on your, your personality, but also your spiritual gifts. I know right now you're thinking about things that you would love to get involved with with Vibrant. I just pray that you come next week with an open mind and an open heart. I pray that you have a blessed week and we're so excited about the future that God has for Vibrant Church and the North Houston area. Be blessed. Have a great week.